The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome everyone to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guests today are Carl Schneider and David Hughes, and they are from the Parkinson's, Parkinson's Association of Santa Barbara. David is the board president, and Carl is a board member. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Yeah. Thank you for being with us today. No problem. Yes, and I'm going to get educated. I'm going to learn all about your organization as well as Parkinson's, the disease, and how it affects people. So maybe you'd like to talk to us about, about Parkinson's. What is it? Who has it? And, and all that. Sure. Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease is a chronic, progressive, neurodegenerative order, disorder that affects primarily the movement of individuals. It's caused by a death of brain cells that results in the brain no longer producing a chemical called dopamine, which would naturally occur in, in a person's system, which would allow individuals to move without thinking about it. When you have Parkinson's disease, it affects your facial expressions, oftentimes your voice, and your ability to move. It, people often have stiffness, mm. they have soreness, they have tremors, and over time it can affect non-motor symptoms, which include things like facial expression, voice, and sleep, sleep habits as well. So there is no known cause of Parkinson's and no cure. Hmm. And both Carl and I have Parkinson's disease. I've had it for seven years. And Carl, why don't you tell Cinder about your Parkinson's? Um, I was diagnosed about four years ago, but I really think I had Parkinson's probably for about 10 years now. Really? Yeah. One of the, and one of the symptoms that I um, found uh, didn't really tune me in that I had Parkinson's was lack of smell. So, um, of course, I blamed that at the time on, I was taking Lipitor, which I call vitamin L. So <laughs> I, I blamed it on that, but in yeah. the end it was my Parkinson's. And about four years ago, um, I ended up getting involved with a local doctor, Dr. Sarah Campnell, who's a movement disorder specialist. And she sent me down to UCLA to have deep brain stimulation surgery, or DBS. Deep brain surgery? Yes. So you had brain surgery? <laughs> I had brain surgery, yep. And, and, and how long ago was that? Uh, three and a half years now. Wow. Yep. And it's been a savior for me, so. So you yeah. really see a difference? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I was diagnosed with, um, let me back up a little bit, diagnosed with uh, tremor-dominant Parkinson's because mm. both my hands were tremoring so bad I actually lost 15 pounds over about a six-month period. Wow. And um, so, uh, and because of my family history, oh. um, decided that I wanted to do the, if I was a candidate, I wanted to do the brain surgery just to see how that would help me. And, and from my standpoint, it's probably helped day-to-day um, -day life, probably 90, 95% improvement. Wow. Although as an architect, I still can't draw and sketch uh -huh. like I used to, but it's been amazing. It's been an amazing process. So the, the lack of, um, so the olfactory um, sense, your, mm -hmm. your sense yeah. of smell. Is that a common early symptom or is that just happened to have been? It's, it's not a common you? early symptom, but it is a common, common symptom common. with people with Parkinson's. So, for example, I've lost some of my sense of smell, some of my sense of taste. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's not uncommon. Parkinson's disease occurs very frequently in the population. About 1% of the population over the age of 65 is diagnosed each year. About 60% new cases of Parkinson's are diagnosed each year. 
Santa Barbara County, we have about 4,000 people with Parkinson's disease. Wait, Santa Barbara County, 4,000 4, people with Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. And usually the diagnosis occurs in your late 60s, mm -hmm. but we do have a number of people here in Santa Barbara and throughout the nation who are diagnosed at an earlier date. And so there are some people in their 30s and 40s who have Parkinson's disease. It's not as common. It's also more common for men to have it than women. Oh. Mm -hmm. Huh. But now you were saying that you feel like you had it long before you were diagnosed. Yes. And is it that a common? A um, it took me a while. Um, another typical um, symptom or where, where you start to notice that you're going to have it is uh, the, the left hand, your ring finger on your left hand mm -hmm. starts to tremor first. Interestingly enough, not yeah. on everybody, but on a lot of people it yeah. did with me. And I can specifically remember it went from my finger to my left hand to my left bicep, to my left forearm, and then switch sides and started it on my right side. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And it's progressive is what and you said. And yeah. yeah. it's progressive, obviously. It's a yeah. progressive disease. Mm -hmm. Those of us who have it can take medication to control the symptoms. So for example, <clears throat> if Carl and I were not on medication right now, we would both be having excessive tremors oh. in one or both sides of our body. But usually Parkinson's disease affects one side of your body only. And I know you want to know oh. about our association. Yes, opening. I was just, you yes, read exactly. my mind. I was going to say, tell so, us about the association. So, this is a special year for us. We're, we're, we're celebrating our 40th year in 40, Santa Barbara. 40 years in Santa, Santa Barbara. Barbara. And we're a local nonprofit. We don't have an office. We don't have a full-time employee. We have a part-time employee. But we provide a range of services, including exercise classes, mm. lectures throughout the weeks and throughout the year to help people with Parkinson's disease and their caregivers. And care so we have, oh, we have and care their caregivers, caregivers, of course. I'd yeah. like Carl to tell you about caregivers because that's an important part of what we do. Yeah, we have a caregiver uh, meeting and we also have what we call the Young Onset Group uh -huh. that also meets every third Sunday. And the caregivers group meets I don't know when that meets because I don't go to that. I happen to have a brochure <laughs> which will help me remind that. The caregiver support group meets every Tuesday at 1 p.m. at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church. And we have other support groups that meet throughout the month, once a month. Right. And twice a week we have exercise classes at 1 p.m. at St. Andrew's Church in, in Goleta. Oh, okay. And the reason why we have the exercise class is every neurologist who deals with Parkinson's disease says the most important thing you can do outside of diet and mm -hmm. plenty of sleep is exercise. Exercise. I have you read have that exercise. about Parkinson's. Because what the nature of the disease, Cinder, is that you, you move parts of your body automatically. We who have Parkinson's cannot do that. We have to think about what we're going to do before we move our arms or our legs. And so exercise helps in the movement process and it helps slow the process okay. of the disease. That makes helps slow the progress yeah. of the disease. <clears throat> so, so I would imagine a person can go on your website and find out when these classes are? Absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. They can, they can either uh, Google Parkinson's Association of Santa Barbara or the website is mypasb.org, mypasb.org. Okay, and you're a 501c3, 501c3 nonprofit, right? They can make contributions, contributions to our organization through that. Yep. They can learn okay. of all the activities we have going on. And Carl's going to tell you about a big activity that occurs once a month. Oh, once wow. a year, excuse once me. Once a year. Okay. Because April is known as National Parkinson's Awareness Month. I didn't know that. And um, at the end of this month, we're going to have uh, what I believe will be our 12th annual symposium. And we're going to have uh, four, four doctors, two local, and one is Carly Barlow, from the, who's the director of the Parkinson's Institute and Clinical Center in Sunnyvale. Oh. And Dr. Indu Submaranian, who is um, with UCLA. And then we're going to have the two local doctors who are both movement disorder specialists, Dr. Sarah Campbell and Dr. Aaron Prasant. And so they'll be there to give a demonstration and talk, not demonstration, talk about 
living well with Parkinson's disease. So, so where will this be? It's going to be at the Elks uh, Club out on Kellogg in, in Goleta. Uh, in Goleta, okay. And so these four doctors will be there, and it'll be like a panel discussion, people asking questions. How, will, it'll, will run, it? it'll run from 9 to approximately 3 o'clock. Okay. As Carl said, we've been doing this for 12 years. We use different doctors throughout the state and throughout the nation to come to us once a year. And they speak about what's current in the medical research concerning Parkinson's, the studies being undertaken to find a cause of Parkinson's, studies in medicine being studied to find cures for Parkinson. They'll be there to present the latest information. They'll also be there to answer questions. And so we usually have about 200 people, people with Parkinson's and their caregivers. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to provide information because the one thing about Parkinson's disease, because we don't know the cause or the cure, the people who have it and their caregivers are hungry <laughs> for information yes, about I that. Yes, I can only yeah. imagine. And for example, Carl will be an individual who will be able to tell people there what it is like to go through brain surgery and the benefits yeah. of it. That's an example of how we share information, not only at the symposium once a year, but throughout the year. We have, yeah. we have lectures once a month where we bring in speakers from throughout California to let the local Parkinson's Association members, approximately 600 in, in number, find out what's happening, what they can know about exercise, diet, and drugs to help them with Parkinson's disease. Okay, so, all right. So you have 600 members in Santa Barbara? Santa Barbara County, yes. County. And so you'll probably get the word out far and wide, L.A. and everywhere else, about the symposium, right? We try to do that. We yes. Have, we have a wonderful public relations member of our board, Richard Graham. Yes. You know Richard. I know Richard well. Graham Chevrolet. You are lucky to have him. We are. And he's doing an incredible job in obtaining advertising for us, both on radio oh, and man. TV and That's newspapers. Great. So we, we have some wonderful sponsors, and it'll be a wonderful event. And we do it every April. And our whole purpose of Parkinson's Association is to provide information and support to people who have the disease and their families and caregivers. Yeah. It, it affects the caregivers as much as it does the, the patients. I use the word patient yeah. because it is a slowly progressive debilitating disease. Mm -hmm. You may remember Bob Kalman, the former mm -hmm. supervisor. Bob had Parkinson's disease. Yes. And many famous people like Michael J. Fox, Neil Diamond, the singer, has Parkinson's disease. Mm. Muhammad Ali had it. Mm -hmm. So you look in any neighborhood and you might find someone who has it. Wow. And so I bet you might have a story to tell us um, about your experience. Wow. Um, the, the funny thing, because I know we were talking about what, what's considered major surgery and what's considered minor <laughs> surgery beforehand. Yeah. And I, had, I have two friends, one who has had Parkinson's probably for almost 20 years, and she was afraid of, of having the deep brain surgery oh. because it involved the brain. And I, while I understand that, um, you know, so she called me the guinea pig because I was I like, if that's available, I want to do it, yeah. right? So when I, I went down after I had done it, she was then willing to do it. I also have another friend who had needed a knee replacement because I was willing to do deep brain surgery. He was willing to do his knee. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I look at that and go, I'd rather have my brain surgery than his knee. But oh, anyway, God. yeah. Wow. Why don't you, why so, you tell Cinder, how long was that surgery? Well, the surgery is actually done in two, two stages. So... They do the brain part of it and insert the wires um, one day, um, and then about two weeks later they implant the unit that controls it. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and then about two weeks after that they turn the system on. But the most interesting thing about the surgery is they, at least where I had it, which is at UCLA, they try to do it with you awake. Because when they're putting the wires in, it's one of the ways they can tell whether they've got the wires in the wrong Golly. place. Golly. And That's it's amazing. an amazing process because when I woke up, I was like, yeah, Gosh. I'm ready. It's, I know, oh, you guys. Because I know it's going to work. I knew it was going to work. So. This, is so, this is so inspirational. Thank you so much for telling us about the disease yes. and about the association yes. and about your upcoming symposium. Yes. And thank you for all the good work that you do. We enjoy okay. it.
enjoyed yeah. being here. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on 805 Focus. <laughs>